Welcome back to Health Matters. We're looking at strategies to good health. Our next strategy is how to cultivate your energy Qigong style. Kindly welcome my next guest, Robert Youngs, founder of the International Institute of Medical Qigong. Welcome, Robert. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so Qigong uh, in Beijing, more than 1.3 million people practice it. And, and in China as a whole, more than 3 million people practice some form of Qigong, health benefits of it. Yes, well, you know, <clears throat> the main purpose in Qigong is uh, cultivation, right? So mm -hmm. cultivation really means transformation. So you're tra trying to transform some aspect of your life. So if you have an aspect, say, if your health is poor and you want to have better health, then you want to transform that, that you would say, that poor healthy condition to a more positive, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and practicing Qigong is uh, really about three different uh, factors, right? What are they? Which is that <clears throat> having the correct posture, right? Because mm -hmm. posture will uh, affect different, uh, different aspects of your health. The second is awareness. You need to have some sort of awareness, and that awareness usually comes through breath. So that's really what Qigong is about, uh, cultivating the breath or cultivating the qi, right? And uh, being aware of where the breath is and where it is in the body. And <clears throat> that can be best uh, perhaps uh, focused by focusing on where you breathe and, and also you know, by the vibration of where that uh, breath is going. So then we would implement something like sound. Okay. sound and breath to become more aware. Mm -hmm. So there, there's many types of Qigong. I mean, when you look at China, they have many dynasties. You know, I was reading in, in 110 AD, the great physician Watto, right. <laughs> you know, was using animal forms, for example, and the deer would help strengthen, I think, you know, the liver and gallbladder. How do you know what to use? Well, there's only three things that Qigong can do, which is the same as acupuncture or herbs, right? Yeah. So either you're, going, you're either going to um, purge something, right? You're going to get rid of some excess in the body, that mm -hmm. which you don't want, mm -hmm. and you're going to bring in that which you do want, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the two of that then is to balance things, right? Mm -hmm. So really, if you look at Qigong, it's about uh, cultivating uh, your energy, and your energy would transform to the breath, to your lungs, so breathing. So you could say, you know, you want to breathe in, Right, so you want to breathe in from the world that which you want to, to bring into your life. Mm -hmm. And you want to breathe out that which, which you want to get rid of from your life. So it can and be used as a transformative aspect, right? And as you're breathing in, are you visualizing what you want to well, bring in? Yeah, so uh, the part of the uh, aspect is uh, to be, uh, use visualization, mm -hmm. imagination. Like I say, you can use awareness of the breath. And also we would say sound. Sound will resonate mm -hmm. with different parts of the body like... Um, sort of like caverns, right? So you make a sound in the cavern and that noise within that cavern mm -hmm. vibrates. So if we use different sounds with the breath in different areas, that'll have you a different response. So can you give us a demonstration? Yeah, so there, there's two things with that which I teach in my program, it's what I call primal sounds, mm -hmm. right? So the first sound is lo located or, or um, helps you become aware of what's called the lower physical center, right? Or the lower dantian as they put it. Qigong terms, and that sounds what they call the ah sound, right? So if you made the sound, you take a deep breath in, and you try to fill your abdomen, and you exhale the sound, ah, and that's what they call the primal sound. That's the first sound you make when you come into the world. It's like, ah, oh, I'm in a new <laughs> world, right? And it's a, it's a sound for, you know, uh, new awareness. It's also a sound of agony if you happen mm -hmm. to be a, a newborn, right? Because you're in a different space. So would that sound reawaken memories of that time? Well, that, that's the thing, is that you concentrate on that sound to feel your connection. So that connection there with that sound is our physical connection. So how we relate to the world physically. So if I have an area that's uh, in distress, let's say, or you know, a health problem with that, I want to use that sound to vibrate, and I would concentrate on sound, letting go of what I don't want to, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it could nurture uh, other areas of the body by using other sounds. So, mm -hmm. so show us. Well, I'll give you an sound. example, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's uh, th like I say, the primal sound, the awe sound. So if I take this breath in, feel the lower abdomen until I can't hold it, and I put an awe, that would be to vibrate and relieve from that area. If I wanted to move upwards, mm -hmm. right? So the next area we use what's called the E sound, which would be kind of like the lower part of the, the uh, diaphragm. So that sound would be inhaling, you take a second breath, so you get the breath up into that chest area, 
It'll be e. We can it's, feel that. Yeah, so the e me. sound mm -hmm. is the second, what I call the second primal sound. Mm -hmm. That's like the sound of attention, right? So e. Well, you were pointing to this area, so are you working in the heart chakra? Not yet. So then we want to move to the heart chakra. <laughs> we have to move up a little farther, right? So that, so these sounds you can say are vowel sounds, right? So very young, yeah. they begin to vibrate. And when you add a sound like, say, we add an H, that's an earth sound, right? Mm -hmm. So what it means is this sound then to come to the to the heart area would be like, ah, and if you do those sounds, you'll feel that that's mm -hmm. going to vibrate the heart. And then another sound moving up farther would be what they call the er sound. And that has to do with the throat. So something bothering my throat or something I want to speak about. So I focus on the sound moving it up. And I go, and you can feel the throat vibrate. Mm -hmm. well, let's, uh, so for people who are choked up or have emotions they want to express, but they yeah. hold them in, that would be a good sound yeah. to help release that energy? Well, let's say you have something you want to get off your chest. Right. <laughs> something I want to speak about, right? Yeah. So we said the er sound, right, is moving up to the throat. And the uh, ha sound or he sound, if you put it with the A or the E, mm -hmm. moves up towards the heart of the chest. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I wanted that, so I would put the H in front of the er sound, and it would be her, and that's a way to relieve something, right? Get something off, and then you would visualize mm -hmm. and imagine what it is you want to. So if you make the sound, what I would say, a uh, loud sound, mm -hmm. and with the exhalation, that means that's what I want to relieve from my life, right? If I wanted to nurture something I like, then I would make the sound kind of softly, like. I'd breathe the sound in, right? And I would bring into my life that which I want to nourish. So it's all about visualization, imagination, using the breath, and using vibration to become if, aware. If a person doesn't, or if, there aren't, if they are not aware of what it is that's blocking them, do the sound still work? It still works. So you, you just uh, vocal, or vocalize those areas or uh, pay attention to those areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do with my course is take the students through a series of progression of sounds until they become aware of the different areas of the body and then afterwards I ask them, what would be the sound, what do you think would be the sound that you need to make? Mm -hmm. And then you don't need to know the particular condition or emotion, you just make that particular sound. Yeah, there's a lot of research on sound therapy and healing. I was pulling up uh, the Center for mm. Neuroacoustic Research. It's in Carlsbad, California, and it's actually uh, a chiropractic doctor who uses sound therapy to adjust a person's spine. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. so what I do is uh, combine uh, different movements uh, with a particular sound, right? So mm -hmm. we start to use then making the breath. So one method, let's say I want to adjust the spine. So if you want to adjust their spine, right? Yeah. So this is a method. We, as we're sitting, it's perfect because uh, this then, you know, with the knees bent, forces the breath into the lower area, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the breath in. So if you want to do it with me, okay. you would take one breath in, a second breath to bring it up, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea is that this is going to... Am I holding it? You want to hold the breath so that you can feel it as it pushes against your chair, against the back. And then what you're going to do is you're going to rotate. Which way? Oh, I'm following you. Yeah, you make, uh, while well holding the breath, until you can't hold it. And then you exhale. What you're doing is you're creating a pressure against the <clears throat> against the tissues to become aware of what's restricted, moving that so you become aware, and then as you exhale, you feel that release. And if you wanted, right, depending on where the sound is, you could release that with a particular sound. So um, a good example is uh, we use something called the uh, ma sound, right? So this is that primal sound, the ah sound, right? And then M, which uh, really stands for what they call the earth, or consolidating, bringing something together. And also it's like, you know, ma, right? So, <laughs> so if I wanted to, you know, bring something in, I'd ma, and that sound would have this consolidating effect, right, in the, in the center of the body. And then if I did that as I'm rotating, then I'm going to help to release any tension or might be stress on the vertebrae with that sound. So using various uh, sounds, right? Mm -hmm. Body posture and awareness is what I call transforming the body. You, you know, using the body for what I would call miraculous change through 
And once the body transforms, the person's life transforms? Well, that's what you're saying. You see, what you do is, to, so mm. if I, for, for that instance, suppose there's something you wanted to have happened in your life, right? Yeah, like having you here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you would breathe in. What I would do is I take this ma sound, do it kind of sub and, you know, it's kind of a suckling sound, right? Mm. You're nourishing yourself. That's mm -hmm. what the sound means. So I'm going to nourish by making the sound and then visualize what it is you want to have in your life mm -hmm. and you feel as it. you inhale. And then if there's something I would want to relieve, maybe I have a, a condition that mm -hmm. I want to relieve, I would visualize that sound leaving as I made that descending sound. Interesting. Um, a while back, I was in uh, in California, Landers, California, where they had the Integratron. It was built in the 60s by George mm. Van Tassel, and it's an acoustically uh, sound dome. It's a resonant tabernacle, and when you go in there and you say, like, hi, the words bounce back right into you, and, you know, you feel good, and if you swear or say something negative, those words go out and come right back, and yeah. it doesn't feel good, and it's a really good exercise for people to understand the power of their words, because your words come back to you as energy. Exactly, and that's like, <clears throat> also like, in the course that I teach, we try to get several participants, because then you have not only an internal sound, yeah. you have an external sound, which means the other participants in your group are making that sound. So even if you're not, uh, you know, uh, uh, comfortable with making these things, releasing these things, you'll get the vibration from others. So that's uh, this, this power of external sound, internal sound. So really uh, your life, your external life is a reflection of your internal life. Wow. Right? Robert, thank you so much for being here and opening up the dialogue for sound therapy. I appreciate it very much. And thank you for joining us today on Health Matters. As a final note, I'll leave you with a quote by Winston Churchill. He says, healthy citizens are the greatest asset any country can have. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>